I V M. Hi, everybody. Just wanted to ask everyone for a quick favor. We're running a brand survey right now and would really appreciate it if you could let us know what you think about the advertising on IBM. Go to ivmpodcast.com slash survey and do let us know. As part of this, we'll be selecting 10 random participants and sending them some IBM swag. So do fill out those surveys. Hello and welcome to the Habit Coach Podcast. I am Ashton Doctor, your Habit Coach. And today with us, we have Garima Pandey. If you haven't heard the first episode, please go make sure you listen to that because out there we talk about solo travel, solo travel for women in India. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about how do you find all those interesting things, those offbeat locations, things that you can do that are not touristy in nature. So without further ado, let's jump into the podcast. So now what I want to talk about is how do you curate experiences, right? Like, how do you find all these interesting things that are there? And I know that you have some crazy, crazy things that you've planned for people, right? Take us through a couple of these experiences that you plan for some people. And how can we start researching things like this, or at least finding out about places like this? Yeah. So, well, you know, it's been a I think the first two years or three years of our journey has been very, very slow. All the places, because uh, uh, my co-founder and I, we literally, literally would have gone to every single place and done these things ourselves. So all these things that I'm talking about, um, you know, whether I like diving, I like surfing or doing yoga in some crazy place or um, going somewhere, learning how to make whiskey locally or, you know, consuming some local wine and learning how it's made or sitting with a woman and weaving with her are kind of things that I like to do. And when I was quitting, you know, a nine something year old corporate career to do this, uh, it certainly had to be driven by a passion that that both me and my co-founder share. And that's that's exactly what got us exchanging notes all of the years. And before we started, we were always exchanging notes about what cool thing that we did somewhere and what new crazy thing that we did in some place. And you should go to that place and do that thing and whatever you may want to term it as offbeat or new or unique experience. But they were just experiences that we started loving. And then there were some observations that I had especially as a diver, you know, that a lot of places that I started diving, especially with Indian women, there would be very few Indian women travelers to begin with, you know, in terms of solo travel across the world, you would find a lot of women from the West who would come there, you know, be in India also seamlessly, while in India, we are still talking that India women are safe, hai, nahi hai, right? Um, and and they, are, they are so, they are traveling just with as much ease all over our country. So um, I, I think so. a couple of these observations to say, why aren't women able to travel, you know, or uh, I, I've been in places where I've signed up for a hike or a, or a night safari or, you know, a night walk somewhere. And, um, uh, you know, the wife is left behind because, because she's scared and because she's a woman and the husband is coming. And, you know, I think all of these notes exchanged and, you know, over the period of years sort of got us thinking, what can we do? So to answer your question, the first three years, we only spent enrolling these people. And uh, they were they were literally experiences that we had sort of gone through on our own. Then we went through a process of, because we were scaling and we had a growing business. And then we went through a process of people within our circle, you know, I mean, birds of a feather flock together. I know many people who are divers, who are trekkers, who are hikers, who are, you know, who do all these crazy things when they go. And then we started getting into, you know, that level of referencing. And by then we had a process to say that this is a 10 point checklist. If you want to become a wandering Jane local expert. And, you know, then we started kind of onboarding them. Yeah. And, and then the identification process of our local expert is very, very intense. So we have our local experts who can tell you, you know, if I was to ask you, you live in Bombay, I'm sure you would know everything from a religious thing that somebody can do from a party scene to um, an adventure scene to something crazy in Bombay. And these are the kind of experts we started onboarding who would know a lot, or we started onboarding multiple experts in the same place. And they were all experience led. Uh, you know, what can they offer? Is that is that a boutique stay riverside, something unique in the middle of a jungle? Or are you able to offer an activity like a yoga or fishing or something like that? So Garima, as a solo traveler, if I'm looking at offbeat experiences, okay, what are the things that I should maybe search for online or Google? Or how do I even start the process of thinking about which kinds of offbeat experiences exist in a particular city? So say I'm going to a particular city for a a holiday or even a work trip and I want to have one or two such offbeat experiences. What do you think I should do? How should I find these out? Um, 
Yeah, Ashton, that's a great question. And I think everybody wants to figure those offbeat experiences. And of course, you can Google and you can find out some things to do. I would say start with start with something, you know, if, if you are looking at a particular destination, uh, read up about it, you know, I think in, in terms of... Um, what we are poor at is knowing the place. You know, we all want to go to a place because it's a popular destination. But do I know its history? Do I know what it's famous for? And uh, I think that that's a good starting point to say what is that place famous for, right? If I'm going to, um, if I'm going to a Tirthan Valley, you know, what is it known for? It's it's you know, what kind of things do people do there? Or you know, if if I'm into food or I like like cultural experiences, so what kind of uh, you know what kind of things grow there? What can I do with it? So I think I think read up about the destination destination if that's your leader and I think for most travelers that is the leader to say that this is where I want to go and then I'll figure what experiences I want to do there are very few travelers I would say maybe 10 20 percent who would do it the other way to say that this is what I want to do and now let me find places where I can go so for most people find out um, uh, you know when, when you're researching on the place know the place first find a local contact if possible uh, there are portals who give you verified local contacts like us or if not do your research, spend that extra time, but find a local contact who can who can help you explore the place like how you want to and what you would like to do. So I think that's that's the way a solo traveler should travel. Of course, there are there are blogs, there are blogs, there are um, you know there are ready made itineraries. Maybe you can use that for inspiration, and you know you can pick up things from there as to what you'd like to do. But I, I think simply put, read up on the destination. You would get a lot of information once you start reading up on the destination. You understand its terrain. You understand where it where it is. What kind of geography is there, and uh, that will that will you know sort of build your interest. For instance, you know we've had travelers who are so I mean you know there, there's a lot of for travelers who loves she does some fabric work and she loves uh, anything crafty and uh, you know anything to do with unique uh, handcrafted uh, sort of fabric you know and every time she travels that's the first thing she will do to say that you know what what can I do there what is it famous for you know do they paint on fabric do they print do they do they sew it do they weave it and you know and and that's that's a very major part of her solo travel with us we ensure and over the period of time you know we find out local experts who can help her do all of this and even engage in that experience while she's there interesting so find out something that you like explore it but where do I find these things online? Like, how do I even go about searching for them? You know, like, is it just like a simple Google search? Are there like places that you find that are interesting that have helped you in the past? Are there particular kinds of people that I need to follow to find these kind of experiences? Like, how? Yeah, yeah, well, um, I think all of the above, right? I, I feel one of the problems we are trying to solve with our local experts and why we are doing that is because there is information overload. You know, you have you have too much information. So if you're following people, if you're following a popular, you know, company, uh, or if you're following a, a popular blogger or, or a vlogger, uh, follow what they like to do. I think, you know, we just follow because um, that's fun and that's interesting and the content is good. I think if you follow the right people, there are a lot of people who are who are making really good content and uh, who are giving genuine content so follow follow businesses follow pages follow people on you know instagram youtube whatever your preferred channel is and get that information from there and that's a great point to start with to understand information you know and which one works uh, better according to you instagram works better youtube works better what, what do you think is is a good way of well, the best way of thinking about it yeah, great. I think I think a mix of both. You know, I don't think uh, 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 you know, but but I know people who are who are not on Instagram and who only follow YouTube. I think it's in you know, in my opinion, and um, of course, I also work as a marketing branding consultant, so I can't help but say this. But I think I think it's a customer choice. It's also to see how you prefer content. If you like crisp visual content. Instagram is your forum. If you like to do a lot of thorough uh, research and long videos, YouTube is your channel, you know, because the, the same person will give you literally in three pictures and five lines as to what you can do in a certain place and what he or she likes to do. And YouTube, you could spend 20 minutes sort of doing that, right? So I think the channel can be dependent on what you like to do. Um, and, and, you know, you could, you could consume sort of content there. Give us some ideas on, on interesting offbeat things that you've send people on like what like make my imagination go wild so well i mean we've been doing things like of course like you know you're surfing and scuba diving um whiskey tasting in in scotland you could go for horse riding in sweden you could go for crazy spa if you're into wellness in in 
Kerala. You can, uh, you know, stay on the boat and do yoga in Goa. You could kayak. You could paint with coffee. And if you're a coffee, you know, lover, you could sip coffee, paint with it. There are very interesting wine experiences. There are very interesting mixology experiences that we do. So something last year in the pandemic, which sort of helped us uh, stay through because travel was zero. Nobody was traveling, you know, and everybody wanted to do solo travel because we were so in, you know, sort of engaged with our little family of our local experts. We sort of empowered them and we translated some of the experiences to online experiences. So we had a local expert sort of take somebody through a Game of Thrones walk. We had a local expert, um, you know, take you through tea gardens in Assam and sort of take you through that, uh, you know, tea garden process live on a class in, in, on Zoom. Uh, you know, we had somebody, uh, one of our experts in Spain who, you know, is, is a flamenco dancer. She conducted a class live. Uh, you could, in Spain, one of our top experiences is to go and make your own shoe. You know, it's known for a particular style of shoe that you can make. So um, there is this lovely couple who can take you through a shoe making and you can make it, you know, you could put whatever the lace and whatever else you like and you can make your perfect pair of shoe we sort of started that online last year we did we did a, a whiskey um, uh, you know mixology session and tasting session right from Scotland where there was a pre-list given and the same experience you know what one would do online we uh, offline we tried to sort of translate that into our digital experiences and yeah these are some of the um, interesting things that people are doing Garima, all this sounds damn expensive, yeah. Like, how, how do you think about these experiences and and money and balancing? Are they really expensive? Are they, or they just sound expensive? No, they aren't. Uh, see, look, uh, some of them will be expensive. Some some sports are expensive. There are there are some of our travelers who like to pick golf in um, in absolutely crazy locations and in, in the craziest places. Golf is known to be an expensive sport, whether it's in your own city or elsewhere. You know, if you are into fine whiskey tasting, uh, it'll cost you the same whether you're in Bombay or somewhere overseas. But most experiences are not expensive. You know, we have cooking experiences, we have archery experiences, we have like very different kind of, or a village walk. And uh, in fact, you'd be surprised some experiences that we offer are, are, are complimentary. They're free of charge. There is no cost to kind of do a couple of these experiences. None of them are expensive, but in general, most travelers, what we notice um, spend about between 20 to 40% on experiences. And, you know, to keep the total cost of the uh, trip in check, they end up planning in advance, book tickets, you know, in advance, because that that ends up sort of being a a big cost to to travel. If you plan in advance, you know, you can uh, can reduce your travel cost. Uh, You know, if you plan in advance, you can get good stays. We also recommend homestays that are experiential in nature, which are great, you know, and, and not cost you a bomb to stay in some of the star hotels and there are all kinds of experiences, I would say. And no, to answer your question in, in a straightforward way, they are not expensive at all. Um, in fact, uh, you know, last year when we started doing virtual experiences, it opened up a new market. Our average experience was priced at literally 400 rupees, you know. So um, you could learn uh, flamenco dance from someone in Spain for 400 bucks. And uh, if so, if you can't travel and if you think the cost of going there and all that is overwhelming to you, um, you know, you could you could sign up for a virtual class and yeah for people who like to travel people who like to explore or learn new things or do something new every month and are not able to travel for 100 other constraints there are so many people who are offering these virtual experiences so travel shouldn't stop you can you can anywhere learn you can anywhere do new things you know it's so interesting because you say that travel is all about the experience and now you are creating the experience at home sitting down probably over zoom getting that same experience as it was traveling five things to keep your budget in check like what are the things that you you mentioned one which is book tickets in advance and book experience in advance what are the other things that you've noticed that helps keep your budget in check because i know that's a big issue for people traveling yeah so well plan if you go planned because there are a lot of people who come back with you know a financial hangover from a holiday because you know they didn't they didn't plan for certain you know sort of expenditure and when they went there and you know there were there were a lot of other miscellaneous sort of expenses that came through which you hadn't sort of you know taken care of so uh, planning in advance i think always works booking tickets in advance always works um see what you like to spend on see you know if if you're a traveler who's all about um there are there are a lot of travelers who like to stay 
and want to experience a very sort of, you know, boutique sort of stay, understand what experience you would like, I would say, right? If you are an outdoor person, don't go crazy on your stay. Look at something which is uh, within, uh, you know, your budget or, you know, you can sort of look at good, clean homestays within your budget and go crazy on the things that you like to do outside. If you are looking, if you are a person who wants a very heightened experience stay, but don't want to be, you know, going in, you know, the adventure driven kind, then, you know, kind of balance between the two. Um, Where do you go find homestays from? So are there websites for homestays? Well, uh, we use our local network. We use mm. our local experts because like I said, there's too much information, you know, so some mm. of the, some of the problems that you have, uh, you know, in finding homestays and BNB and when I traveled, so I could be looking for, you know, um, I'll tell you, a, I'll tell you a real story, right? I went to, I went to Bali and I wanted to stay. Um, I was alone. I wanted to stay for a couple of days and, um, you know, I looked at Ubud on one of the sites uh, a couple of years ago and it gave me something, you know, which is two kilometers away from the city center. And then I realized that two kilometers is a pain I wouldn't get anything and I can't like walk it five times in a day if I need to just go for a cup of coffee and there is nothing around so a lot of these location based um, you know can be overwhelming which is which is also a part of the problem that we realize that people are facing that there is too much information and the authentication of that information is 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 a uh, an app, you know, so most, most stays and most places that you search today are either driven by a sort search of cheapest or, you know, closest to some place, but you still don't find what you are looking for, which is why, um, which is why the local contact, and I must have said this a hundred times in this podcast today, but which is where that person comes into picture, right? To say that, what do you want to do? You know, do you just want to be in a rice field and be alone and read a book? Stay here. You know, if, if you want to be in the heart of the city and you want to explore cafes and you want to, you, you know, you want to kind of eat interesting food and you want to meet people, go there. So um, finding homestays can be very, very difficult difficult. Let me, let me say that it's not, it's not as easy as, as I'm just saying it stay at home stay. So, which is why I think. Yeah, which is why I was uh, asking, because I know like staying at hotels is easy. Just like go to the app, search, find, see what, what fits my budget, but like home stays, like how do you even start evaluating and finding places? It's, It's difficult. It is. And there is no standardization, right? Like, you know, mm-hmm. for the hotels, most hotels, you would have a star rating and we all understand what, what do you mean when you, when you, what you would get when you mean a two star and a three star and a four star and a five star. And I think that's a fabulous business idea. And I'm sure some people are working on it. And if I don't get my hands on it, someone else will to say that, how do you categorize these BNBs or these homestays, which are out there, right? Because uh, pictures don't do justice. You don't know what you're, what you're getting. And to fix that problem, it's a problem to fix that problem. What we have sort of, you know, Empowered is our local expert who gives all this information and who makes it amply clear to you as to where you're going, where you would be staying and what do you want to do. But it's a tough job. Uh, But yeah, follow, like I said, follow businesses who are doing it, follow people, you know, who've gone there, um, uh, you know, understand, read up the reviews. It's a lot of work to kind of find uh, that, but read, read more than just the face value of it, I think would help, right? So if you're following a particular you know, YouTuber or or an Instagram uh, person who's gone to that homestay, try and understand, use maps, you know, see where you want to go, the things that you want to do. These are just simple things that will help you realize in terms of where you're going to be when you're on your trip. Before going ahead, we'll take a quick break. Hey, everybody, it's been a great week on the IBM Podcast Network. On Advertising is Dead, Varun talks to Paul Ravindranath Ji, Program Manager, Developer Relations, and Head of Google Accelerator for India. They discuss the startup ecosystem and how Google is enabling innovation through this program. On Shunya One, Sheila Dutti and myself talk to Abel Joseph, founder and CEO of IO. We discuss how IO is a truly Indian dating app. It's not so much as a dating app, it's a matching app. It's a really interesting conversation. You should definitely check that out. On Postcards from Nowhere, Utsav uncovers the hidden injustice in India's languages and how it shapes the way we travel and interact with people. On the Life Manifesto, Zarina debunks leadership myths that are popular amongst people. And on Kail Niti, Rajiv Mishra, Nikhil Chopra and Ayaz Memon discuss Australia winning the T20 World Cup. Do follow us on social media. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn. And remember, if you're enjoying this show or any of our other shows for that matter, please do tell a friend. Also, do check out our various YouTube channels. You can catch them on IVM Podcast slash YouTube. And finally, we'd like to thank our sponsors on the network this week. Cred, Bank of Baroda, Quarta, Coinswitch, Kuber, Flay Coffee, Intel and Oxfam India. Thank you so much for making this possible. And we are back. Tips for keeping, you know, on food and etc. When you go there, you said eat local. 
Yeah. Right. Like, how do you go and find local? How do you understand that? Like, what is the any any tips around food and and budgeting around that? Yeah. So I think uh, I you know so yeah. So also when you when you spoke of budget, food is a is a big expense. Local travel is a big expense. So these are kind of things that you should know what you would like to do, right? So if you're comfortable with self drive options, there are various self drive options. Um, you know you can find out local transport, and these kind of things also keep your cost low. When it comes to food, you know, and and I'm actually to be honest, I had no idea before before wandering Jane that how many people really travel for food or how much they love to explore something locally made so find i think that that information is available again you can you can find that information prior to going there uh, when you read up on the place you would know what is locally produced there locally made there what is the local dish and uh, uh, you know you'd be surprised that it's it's probably cheaper to have local food in in most of these places than to have the food that we demand when we go there right so um, both from a budget perspective and um, you know from an experience perspective uh, you know it's great to eat local you uh, the best way to to do so is to find if you're staying at a homestay or even in a hotel even if you're staying in a hotel you know uh, a local person just sort of informing you where to go is is i think the best best way to do it right and they would know the best um, in terms of what's going on if you're following some of the there are there are so many food bloggers who particularly um you know sort of cover this and this is this is i think been the most um, i mean you know when i was growing up you know the, the content of um, uh, rocky and mayur and you know the, those those were the you know way we travel to places right they made that life to say this is what you should have there and this is what you shouldn't have here highway on my plate right absolutely highway right? absolutely absolutely mm-hmm. and and the, these are these are shows which are years old you know so mm-hmm. food and traveling for food is is not something new i understand that fl- food bloggers and instagrammers have made it very glamorous and beautiful pictures but it's it's been it's been one of religion and food i think have been the two sort of reasons why people traveled initially right and it's now everything is available everywhere where and mm. uh, it's become different but these were i think the uh, you know if you go back to initial days these were reasons why people traveled so very easy to find information on food but what you should find is you know i mean understand if if you are sensitive you know there are a lot of travelers who are very very sensitive uh, you know in terms tummies. of uh, yeah very sensitive tummies you know have allergies uh, have reactions so um, you know just just sort of be careful take a smaller portion maybe try it or uh, if you don't know what the allergy is if if you are most you know travelers also don't mind really experimenting with yeah. things so yeah. i remember when we got to china we spent i think about 2 3 weeks in china and it was so much fun because every hotel that we went to we asked the local i mean the concierge there saying that where would you take your family to eat absolutely you know i think that question itself changes thing because normally you go and ask acha where can we go and eat what is a good restaurant around here and they always point you to like the fanciest thing because that's what they think that you want Yeah. Right, so the first time they sent us to this fancy Peking duck restaurant, they're like, "No, no, no! Where do you eat? Like, I'm sure you don't eat there all the time." And then after that, we started going to these little, little, you know, family-owned places where, like, uh, you know, other local kids would be running around near our tables and stuff. It was so much fun. Nobody could understand anything language-wise, of course. You just point and then order, and you <laughs> pray that you got something right. but yeah. i think that's the joy in doing these things in the the part of the like we spoke about in the previous podcast about the experience of out stepping out of your comfort zone that 40% outside your comfort zone yeah absolutely absolutely and i would go ahead and say something else you know it's it's not actually the food which is tricky when you're traveling which you know which which sort of upsets uh, uh, tummies and you know causes a, a, you know kind of trouble there um it's the water uh, so i'm going to say i'm going to say one more thing please carry your water bottle every stay from a good home stay to a good hotel to half a decent place has you know uh, water systems filters ro's etc installed refill your bottle carrying your own bottle to some of these local places when you're eating can can help you drink you know you know what you're drinking and you're carrying your own bottle uh, don't depend on packaged water there is a big question mark on that also you don't even know whether that's that's authentic or not plus the plastic you know every single second 1500 bottles get chucked into the ocean so don't contribute to that you know it's been years since i've been carrying a bottle and i don't i don't purchase a water bottle it's been and i have not had a problem anywhere in the world traveling right so airports every place has and i think as travelers if we start to demand these small little things 
um, from the supply side, they will they will be pushed to ensure that they have good drinking water systems. And, you know, people are demanding this uh, uh, sort of, uh, you know, they're demanding refilled bottles. So, you know, they will equip themselves to make sure that they live up to what you're demanding. So, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry that I, I just... I think like, that's sort a of... very good idea. <laughs> a traveling essential. Right, I think that's going to be my next question to you as well. So one is clearly we've got our bottle, a bottle that you should carry, which you can fill up, which is a fantastic thing that you should have. Like you said, it's the water that gets you very yeah. often, right? Um, what are the other four important traveling essentials that you take with you wherever you go and that everybody should take with them? Hmm. So I think the second would be toiletries. You know, it's been fun while growing up and I'm sure all of us have done that, gone to a great hotel and picked up all the toiletries and then the next day again, picked up another set. And at the cost of, uh, you know, sounding really, really quintessential middle class, I'm sure most people have done that, right? Um, don't do that. that. That contributes to a lot of plastic waste. Please carry your own toiletries. It's good for you. You know what you're using on your body, on your skin. It's also good for the environment. It's good for everybody. Please carry your toiletries. So I, I definitely apart from the bottle what I always I mean, I've started to carry for I mean it's not like I used to do this all the while it's I think just that awareness in terms of travel and when you go to a beach you know and you're sitting in a beach town and you know you're sitting in the best beach in Maldives and you know it's so beautiful ever see how they are disposing their waste you will you will stop carrying half the things that that you're carrying you will start in fact carrying things back with you to say that you know what i had this packet of chips or chocolate here let me put it back in my bag and let me take it because this is criminal there so yeah carry your toiletries i always i always carry sunscreen and lip balm i think these are two hacks that everybody should just just carry all the time no matter where you are in the hills on the beach always turns out to be useful. Please carry a valid ID proof. And um, especially for women travelers and for any solo traveler, write down, you know, your your emergency contacts, etc. somewhere and keep it in your bag. You know, people should, in case there is something, people should know who to sort of reach out to. So yeah, and, and um, you said five things, but I also always carry a power bank even if in places that I'm going and I'm switching off, I all, I don't know why, but I always carry a power bank. Maybe I should stop that. <laughs> I, I think the power bank is like an essential thing, right? It's one of those safety mechanisms, just in case. Just like, in case. Huh, it gives you the sense of safety. I used to you carry know, a book all the time, huh. but, uh, you know, and then the book translated into a Kindle, but, uh, you know, I mean, I, and I, I always have a book, you know, and I know people, I've met so many travelers who will not read the book also, but will carry a book. I think that joy as a traveler of carrying a book is is crazy. It's just it's just some next level of fulfillment. Read it. I, I end up reading it, but do carry a book, you know. It will never make you feel lonely or bored. And when you're going through one of that, you know, carry a good picture me a book which which will always make you feel good or good music download a good playlist I, I used to remember when I used to travel a lot for work we used to always find these studs at the airport who just basically walked around without a bag and just a novel in their hand mm. right no bag <laughs> nothing and I was like wow what is this guy doing <laughs> then I was like one day I'm going to definitely do that no nothing just one novel I'm going to catch my flight with I think that was a lot of fun okay, and I so, think you know, that's a that's a very how do I say that's a very selfish request to people I think people should carry their earphones or their airpods or whatever I, I've been on so many flights now where they'll be watching a movie right next to you on speaker don't do that like on a, on a lighter note you know, if you if you like to listen to music and you like to watch downloaded movies, please please carry your earpieces. You know, don't make don't make others listen to what you are going through. Yeah. So Karima, while listening to you now <laughs> on on, my, on these two podcasts, I had an idea. Okay, so this is your new business idea. It's going to be called the Ashton Special. Okay. All right. Plan seven days for me. Yeah. And don't tell me what you've planned. So it should be like the Amazing Race or something. You know, like where every morning I wake up and there's something that I have to do. And I have no clue what I'm going to be doing. Have you ever done any of things like that? I have. And Ashton, you'd be surprised. This is something that I was discussing with somebody. And uh, I know for a fact that there are, there are some, there is, there's a company in the Europe, in, in Europe, which is, you know, sort of doing this uh, or somewhere in the West, maybe I, I think it's in Europe, but this is something which I don't know how many people, maybe if people who are listening to your podcast, I would love to hear from them. If like you, they would like to really sign up for something, which is a, 
just a surprise for seven days and say, this is what everything is planned. Don't worry. You can trust, you can, you know, be rest assured that you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't have any safety issues, any kind of travel hassles, everything will be taken care of. You wouldn't be, you know, sort of left somewhere, but you don't know what you're doing. I, I would be really, really cute. I would love to plan uh, something like that for you. I would love to do that, uh, you know, and have someone do that for me. But that on I, your website, it's going to be called the Ashton special. Okay. Done. 110%. I also want that, to know how many people are going to sign up for that Ashton <laughs> So let's, I'm going to use this as as a as a market research to say how many people say I would sign up for something like that. Yeah, because you know, like I always so like I told you, I hate planning, right? So like this just takes away the entire planning thing from my one task that I have to do. So completely outsourcing it. Absolutely yeah, love it to another level. This is stepping out of your comfort zone hundred percent. You know, <laughs> which is awesome. <laughs> um, so so I'll have carry like cold clothes and swimming trunks at the same time. Yeah, or that that can be told. Or you want to go that crazy, like you don't. You have absolutely. I am. Oh, awesome. I am traveling from the second. You tell me awesome. where to land up. Hmm. Awesome. Done. Ashton Masti. special it is. Done. All right, Garima. How can people get in touch with you? How can people start this conversation with you? So well, we have a website www.wanderingjane.com. Uh, all the coordinates are there. We are of course on Instagram by Jane Loves to Wander. We are on Facebook, um, Wandering Jane. So if you type out Wandering Jane, even on Google, uh, you would get to us. So I think that's the simplest thing because people, I think, don't remember numbers. They don't remember websites. But go Google Wandering Jane, and you can reach us. Um, yeah, we are we are available all the time to craft any kind of solo trip, customized trip, whatever else for you and travel. is all about experiences go experience something that you've never done before and it'll change your life lovely thank you karima thank you thanks ashton so start these habits and share with us your progress using the hashtag the habit coach if you like this podcast don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the ivm network you can listen to us on the ivm podcast app or ivmpodcast.com you can also follow us on social media We are at IVM Podcasts on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to reach out to me, I am Ashden Doc on Twitter and Instagram. You can find lots more information on my website, awesome180.com, or check out different content on my YouTube channel called A W E S O M E One Eight Zero. That's Awesome One Eighty. Eventually, you'll see the end of your childhood. Get accustomed to womanhood. Enjoy the experience of sisterhood. Might get to wifehood or not. Choose motherhood or not. You learn to define your personhood. Earn a livelihood. Change the neighborhood and get rid of the falsehood that life post academia is easy. So join me, Ritasha, and me, Ayushi, on a journey from station starting point to station um what now? Next station. Odin station and hopefully Agla station adulthood fresh episodes out every thursday safar raste manzil aur muqam aksar ye humse kuch kehna chahte hain par hum hain ki apni rozmarra ki zindagi mein inhe sunne se katrate hain namaste dosto mera naam hai keshav chaturvedi aur main aapko le chalunga kuch aise safar par जहां आपको एक नया नजरिया मिलेगा सफर और मंजिलों को देखने का आइए इन किस्से कहानियों में डूब जाएं हर मंगलवार और शुक्रवार